Good afternoon and welcome uh, to the Benigo Health Quality Nursing Awards and Annual General Meeting. My name is Peter Faulkner, Chief Executive Officer, and it is my privilege to uh, acknowledge country. I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the Jajaja uh, Wurrung country and pay respects to the Jara people who have been traditional custodians of these lands on which we meet today. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I would um, like to acknowledge our country from wherever you may be uh, viewing this, but also to pay respects to any First Nations uh, people who are in the room with us today. Um, so it's my uh, pleasure and privilege to welcome uh, our board chair, uh, the Honourable Bob Cameron, to uh, give us uh, his welcome and uh, the year in review. Chair. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, to our wonderful CEO, uh, uh, Peter Faulkner, for that introduction. Uh, and to you, Peter, and to all the staff, all of the board uh, join with me to congratulate you on what a fantastic year this has been. When you think about the enormous challenges that Bendigo Health um, has had to face, in fact, the entire health system has had to face um, in, in the last year, we take our hats off at the way you've been able to adapt uh, and adapt so quickly. And it's something that uh, I think we are all very, very uh, proud of. So we have... Uh, we have, during the course of the year, um, had to establish a, a vaccination centre. As you will remember, uh, the states were only going to do about 25% of vaccinations. Um, here in central Victoria, we've done more than half, which is a great credit to uh, not only to the team, but what that's done is benefit central Victorians as they've been able to get vaccinated um, quicker. And um, the board is just so impressed with the way that's been done and done so seamlessly. So. I think all of the people of this great city and region say uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for, for that effort because it has meant that people have been vaccinated um, earlier. At Bendigo Health, uh, building works continue. So while we've had to deal with coronavirus, while we've had to deal with the um, business that goes on um, every day in a hospital, we've also kept our eye on the longer game and uh, we've been able to continue with uh, this fantastic facility that we've got here. And we're just about to start work over the road at the old hospital. It's nearly five years since we moved uh, from over the road into this tremendous facility. Um, but over there is going to be the, uh, the day rehabilitation centre. And here is the, uh, um, a diagram of the, um, the new rehabilitation pool, which is going to, going to be built. So over the next year, we're going to see that redevelopment development occur. But in addition to that, there's the early parenting centre that the government uh, has announced. So we're going to see that uh, built uh, in Bendigo. And also our nursing homes are also having more uh, development work. So there's a lot on, uh, a lot on, a lot's been planned and a lot's going to be occurring in the years ahead, which makes it an exciting time uh, here at, uh, at Bendigo Health. One of the things that uh, we have seen in the last year uh, we've seen uh, with the cath lab, uh, where they're now, is it now 24-7 operations. So Bendigo Health is now 24-7 half hospital. And it's something that we really wanted to aspire to, to be a 24-7 hospital. You know, we don't have to go back um, that far when if you had a heart attack, you wanted to have a heart attack in business hours between 9 and 5, Monday to Friday. Otherwise, you would be carted off uh, to Melbourne, and hopefully you got there. Um, all of that has now changed so much. And uh, now that we've gone 24-7, that's fantastic. That also complements uh, the air ambulance, uh, who often deliver people to us. It might be from Kahuna. They've had a heart attack. They're quickly here, quickly in the, ca uh, in the cath lab. lab. Uh, and that's just taken us to a different level. Uh, and it's something that I think that we're all very, so very proud of that we're now a major, major hospital in Victoria that happens to be in a regional location rather than 
previously where we were just a regional hospital and uh, that's something that we've that, that uh, we've, we've seen so much of which comes to the last point i really want to make and that's really about the transformation when you go back uh, five years ago go back to 2016 when we were talking about we were going to be moving uh, um, in a few months time you know one of the things that we said at the time is that we would we expected that there'd be a, a thousand additional full and part-time um, people at Bendigo Health over the course of the next decade. In fact, we're already well over a thousand, only five years in. That has been the extent of the transformation that has occurred. And it is in part because of the energy of our staff wanting to treat as many people as, as possible. So government has wanted to, uh, to invest in it. And it has also been in part with central Victorians who have responded so well and they have want to come to Bendigo Health. They don't want to go to Melbourne, they want to come to Bendigo Health. And that's really been part of this exercise, a regional development exercise. Why, would, why do we want to have people treated in Melbourne if we can be treated here? The jobs can be here. You can build a bigger and a better service, which in itself attracts people, uh, attracts people to the city. So that's been uh, an enormous change uh, of itself, uh, and it makes uh, Bendigo Health uh, you know, the largest employer, uh, you know, basically one of the largest employers uh, in, in, country, in country Victoria. Now we have some uh, minutes uh, from the last uh, AGM, this is a technicality, um, but uh, Julie Green moves that they be accepted and uh, Di Fogo seconds that, and everybody, everybody is in favour of that. And now it's my pleasure to uh, hand over to the Chair of the Finance Committee, Michael McCartan. Please make him welcome. Thank you, Bob. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let me briefly run you through some of the highlights of the year, followed by an expert explanation on how our finances performed through the pandemic. COVID-19 had a big impact on our organisation this year. To run through some of the figures, as at November 24, we treated 11 COVID-19 patients in the intensive care unit and 136 inpatients, the majority of which were cared for on the respiratory ward. Our hospital in the home monitoring program had looked, looked after 722 patients in the community. These are just COVID numbers. Testing rates continued to surge with our health service passing 150,000 swabs in November. That's a huge number. But there are also some lighter moments during a challenging year, like eight-year-old Nate Grieve, pictured here driving a car to his surgery. Nate arrived in theatre with a smile on his face and a driver's license. <laughs> Thanks to the Koala Kids Foundation who donate equipment to hospitals throughout the state to help improve kids' hospital experiences. Bendigo Health launched a Solidarity Pancakes Day one Sunday in November. The Solidarity Pancakes movement began in Melbourne during the pandemic and it's a fun way to acknowledge and support our healthcare workers for their efforts over the last 20 months. The day was well supported by the community and healthcare workers. For the financial year to 30th of June 2021, our turnover was $619 million, which is a 13.7% increase from the $544 million in 2020, reflecting both growth and COVID funding. It was only a year or so ago we were talking about getting over the half of of a billion dollars worth of activity through Bendigo Health and now look at it. This slide is a snapshot of our current financial position showing a slight net operating surplus for this year of 300,000 in a year of increased activity. The comprehensive result was an $8.7 million deficit. Our net assets were $455 million at the end of the financial year. The full financial details are contained in the annual report, which is available on the Bendigo Health website. Specifically, the funding received enabled us to undertake a number of key initiatives. We opened a high volume COVID-19 vaccination clinic in Mollison Street, as Bob remarked on earlier. 
Importantly, we've established and staffed a local public health unit, which is responsible for contact tracing, testing, and overseeing vaccination in the Long and Mallee region. We've created 24 seven cardiology service, which now provides on-call weekend services for patients coming to Bendigo Health. Activity, a quick glance at the growth in activity numbers illustrate how still in demand our services are or were in 2020-21 year. With most, most of the year, the region experiencing restrictions on movement and community programs such as sport. 51,388 admitted patients were treated, a 1.5% increase on the last COVID impacted year. Another extraordinary number is 60,839 emergency presentations. That's a huge number. It's up 7.1% on the prior year. It's the equivalent of over half the population of the city of Greater Bendigo attending our emergency department for a treatment in that year. And these figures exclude the COVID screening clinic presentations there on top of those numbers. We've had 118,695 service events provided by our specialist clinics, again up 7.9% on the prior year. There were 1,753 babies delivered at Bendigo Health, again, extraordinary number. 4.2% above those delivered in the prior year. It's getting close to five births every day. It has been another extremely busy year with significant growth across the service. I now move that the finance financial report as detailed in the 2020-2021 annual report be accepted. And I have a second, please. Dr. Cap. All in favour? Harry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the lectern Scott Elkington, who is the fundraising board chair. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Scott Elkington, uh, fundraising chair, and uh, Bendigo Health's fundraising foundation team and our generous community raised just over $1.2 million for specialised equipment services at Bendigo Health last year. Amazing given when you consider the financial impact of, of the coronavirus and the pandemic. This year, $424,000 or $423,935 to be precise, Michael will be happy with that, <laughs> um, was allocated to specialist equipment. Overall, 170,000 was allocated from our Bendigo Health Foundation annual fundraising uh, uh, round grants. We focused on improving our fundraising technology with a new website launched uh, to better engage with our support network. Uh, we broadened our grants program with successful major grants from uh, the Angle Family Foundation, the Collier Charitable Fund, and the Tour de Cure. Uh, our impact uh, at a glance there for you. Um, we continue to support key programs and distribute emergency patient clothing for newborns receive their very own book as part of the Books for Babies Literacy Program. Tim also participated in the frontline response, securing many of our in-kind donations, such as QV products, Kit Kats, most importantly for the chocolate lovers, mm -hmm. ASOP products for some of us aged. <laughs> and weekly fruit supplies through empowering Eagle Hawk to support and show our staff the appreciation from our community for their efforts. Fundraising for Cancer Wellness Services has been a priority for the year, and we've worked closely with Dry July on funding for our Cancer Wellness Program and Coordinator. An amazing $392,000 was raised for our Cancer Wellness Services and saw the establishment of the Go Bay Wellness Centre years ahead of schedule following a generous donation from Helen Gobas. The 2020 Christmas Appeal raised over 80,000 for paediatric rehabilitation equipment to improve the quality of life of children in our region. The funds raised through the Appeal will fit outdoor and indoor play areas with former 
in the former children's ward with fully inclusive and accessible fixed play equipment for use during rehabilitation therapy sessions. This was proudly supported by Benningham Bank and many other sponsors, along with a significant grant received from the Collier, Collier Charitable Fund. Uh, I might add last Thursday, our fundraising foundation team were awarded as the state winners and national finalists, as we boast, by the Fundraising Institute of Australia for their work, uh, winning the Impact on a Shoestring Category <laughs> Award, which is might be delighted here, <laughs> for our Christmas appeal and focus on paediatric excellence. So that's a fantastic effort. Um, they're pretty excellent um, and well deserved. This year, we're extremely grateful for the 200,000 bequests from the estate of the late Jewel Ridge and significant gift from the late Thomas Smith, um, which will be dedicated to specialised equipment uh, purchases through Benigo Health Foundation. The legacy continues with the Pethard Tarax Charitable Trust, some of us older ones in the room can remember drinking Tarax, um, providing an annual contribution received uh, from them since 1917. The gifts and wills provide a lasting legacy. The 275,000 received this financial year will contribute. Uh, well, sorry, we'll continue to make a, a, a difference for future generations. We'll, we'll continue to work with our local lawyers and families to ensure we honour their wishes and create a lasting legacy. Uh, COVID-19 COVID put a hold on many special events. However, our newly established Move for Mental Health Virtual Fundraising Fitness Challenge exceeded expectations, raising awareness and significant funds to support exercise programs for regional mental health patients. Our music and arts project continued a collaboration with the Alumbra Foundation and Stratagem with many musical performances moving online for patients and staff for our community to enjoy. Finally, we generally thank, we genuinely thank our generous supporters and sponsors. Your commitment to fundraising into our health services has shone through the toughest of times. Our principal sponsor, Exemplar Health, Benny O Bank, Benny O Toyota underpin fundraising efforts and we thank them for their continued support. Finally, a huge thank, to you, thank you to you, our Foundation Charitable Trustees and our Fundraising Advisory Board for their dedication. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge retiring uh, board members, Sue Roosh, who's one of our inaugural um, board members, and Matt Bowles, one of the inaugurals, as well as Vicky Gordian and Peter Faulkner for their wonderful support as they retire off the board. And I'd particularly like to acknowledge and thank Gum for joining our board, um, our board, our new board rep, Diane Fogo, and Dr. Sky Kinder. A special thanks also to our wonderful auxiliaries and the volunteers and many staff, and many staff that support our initiatives, community groups and organisations. We thank the Blue Ribbon Foundation, Heartbeat Victoria, and the local community enterprises, including Stratford State District Community Enterprises, Empowering Eagle Hall and Northern District uh, Enterprises for their ongoing support. I'd also like to send our thanks to our dynamic fundraising team, supported strategically by the executive of the hospital, Benio Health, and we thank them for their commitment to creating a culture of philanthropy and fundraising throughout our hospital. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Scott. We're now going to have the annual nursing awards, and the first of those is the Judy Chapman Scholarship. Award for Midwifery Excellence. Would you please welcome uh, from the board, Dr. Ava Pajenko. Uh, thanks, Bob. This year we present the Nursing and Midwifery Awards, which recognise staff's commitment to delivering excellent care every person, every time. The first award is the Judy Chapman Award for Midwifery Excellence. It'll be presented by Greg Chapman and Jessica Chapman. In August 2011, Judy Chapman, a passionate and inspiring midwife from our maternity team at Bendigo Health, sadly passed away from cancer. Judy was a highly valued and loved colleague, aspiring to provide outstanding midwifery care at all times while mentoring others to do the same. Judy was constantly striving for excellence in midwifery care for women and their families and instigated the MAFTA program, creating a valuable service to women in our community. Judy Chapman personified midwifery excellence. An award of $1,000 is given to a midwife who displays excellence within their midwifery practice, impacting positively on those who seek care. The recipient of this year's award is a midwifery educator 
and was nominated by a nurse unit manager who describes her as dedicated, clever, and passionate. The recipient has worked in the MAMTIC program and demonstrates a patient-centered approach to care. The recipient has assisted in the creation of a virtual tour of the Women and Children's Centre for patients and became an EPR coach, providing assistance to staff with the complexities of the system. The recipient regularly contributes to staff professional development and the assessment of competencies and is described as a warm, friendly and professional person at all times to women and families. Please join us in congratulating Belinda Rosea as a recipient of the Judy Chapman Award for Midwifery Excellence. I just say firstly, yeah. on behalf of um, the Chapman family and Marie Conway, um, it's wonderful to give this award every year. And mm. Belinda, congratulations on the year. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful recipient. And it's great to see another man to great that come through. Mm. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you very much. Um, it means a lot to receive this award. I remember working with Judy. Um, and yeah, she was an inspiration in midwife, and it's yeah, a great honour to receive this. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To present the next award. Thanks, Eva. The, the next award is the Jan Lorimer uh, Award for Quality Improvement, which is available to a nurse who demonstrates a passion for improving quality and standards in nursing. Jan was a valued employee of Bendigo Health, uh, and during her nursing career, Jan's depth of empathy and compassion was clearly evident, highly valued and much admired. Jan had a passion for diligence in all practice areas and was a very strong advocate for the continual improvement of nursing standards and continued education. Through the generosity of the Lorimer family, we are able to offer an annual scholarship of $5,000. This award celebrates Jan's nursing career and is designed to continue her exemplary leadership in the provision of quality nursing care. The recipient of this year's Jan Lorimer Award has been a valued member of the women and children's team and more recently, the Lottam Mallee Public Health Unit. The recipient has assisted in several quality improvement projects, including reduction in third and fourth degree cares and assisted Safer Care Victoria in implementation of the project in other Victorian health services. Several evidence-based interventions were implemented, including education and standardization of care and advice. The recipient also implemented education to families around discharge with the newborn, including development of a video for patients. Additionally, the recipient participated in the Safer Baby Collaborative, which was developed with the aim of reducing the rate of stillbirths after 28 weeks gestation. In applying for the award, the recipient outlined how the scholarship will enable her to continue her master's in public health with a focus on women's health. Please join us in congratulating Jamie Oxford as the recipient of this year's Jan Lorimer Nursing Award. Thank you. We're now going to present the Mason Martha Parkinson Award for nursing uh, excellence. And this award is named after Ms. Parkinson, who came to Bendigo in 1901, following appointments as matron at both the Alfred and at the Melbourne General Hospital. And she was the matron here from uh, 1901 until 1913. And she returned later on in a voluntary capacity during World War I. Ms. Parkinson uh, started out life as a teacher and she was committed to providing exemplary um, education and care to nursing students as a result. And as the times, as was fashionable at the time, she was also a strict uh, boss. <laughs> she would do her morning rounds with her parrot on her forearm. And while this may raise eyebrows these days with the infection control people, uh, at the time it was regarded as a quaint, a quaint eccentricity uh, for which she was uh, well known uh, locally. 
The Matron Mar Martha Parkinson Award for Nursing Excellence celebrates her exemplary nursing career and commitment to nursing in the region. The award of $5,000 assists the recipient in advancing their nursing career and makes a further contribution to nursing and the broader community. This year's uh, recipient is recognised for her commitment to working with patients who have or present with a cognitive impairment. The recipient, uh, the recipient uh, is committed to education and support of clinical staff working with this patient group and continues to be an advocate for these patients to ensure ongoing appropriate health care. The recipient has indicated that the award will be used to attend the 35th Global Conference of Alzheimer's Disease to be held in London uh, in June 2022, providing an insight into current advances into treatment management and care of the disease. So you know, how lucky are we to have somebody like that uh, in our, in our organisation? The conference has a strong focus on each of the seven action areas of the World Health Organization um, Global Action Plan. Please uh, join together to congratulate Kath Walsh. Who is the recipient. Yeah, come, come over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, what made you get into nursing? Uh, oh, my mum's a nurse. I followed in the footsteps of my mother. And I initially started with mental health nursing, and then um, the physician in medical health came up with a behavioural disturbance nurse. And I was successful in obtaining that four years ago. And it's kind of like it kind of, kind of found a gap in some of our nursing care and, and education and support for all of these people that present with cognitive impairment. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of go forward with it. And well, you've really seized that, and you've really made that uh, made that your career. What's it been like working at Bendigo Health? It's been good. It's been yeah, it's been interesting, and it's been it's <laughs> different from working in Metropolitan Melbourne, mm -hmm. where I came from. Um, and it's been it surprises me the um, support that the staff do give you when you do come onto the wards with with new ideas and new suggestions, um, and they just embrace it. So it's been really good. And you'd say it's far work better to work here than in Metropolitan oh, Melbourne. This oh, is <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much and congratulations. congratulations. We now have the uh, quality awards and uh, please welcome to Marilyn Beaumont. Oh. Thanks Bob, hello everybody. Um, Bendigo Health's proud history of working hard to improve the quality of care we deliver to the community continues. Our public health response to COVID in terms of um, both public health and our service delivery system changes attests to that and is part of the story. Our quality awards showcase the very best of our organisation and for me it's a joy to be involved in the awards each year. And it is really amazing how these quality processes in different parts of the organisation have continued through this period of extreme change through the COVID process. And this year, as I say, is no different. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce the five finalists of Bendigo Health's 2020-21 Quality Awards. The finalists are Building Capacity and Capability for Autism Assessments. The Child, Adolescent and Mental Health Services Specialist Autism Assessment Service identified an increase in referrals and lengthy wait times for autism assessments for young people. The service obtained funding to train the Child, Adolescent Mental Health Services clinicians to undertake autism assessment. And the program has resulted in earlier assessment and intervention, reduction in the wait list, and increasing our own clinical knowledge in undertaking autism assessments. The second finalist is the Claria Flip Chart and Machine. With the introduction of upgraded peritoneal dialysis machines, the renal team identified there was little information to support patients to manage these machines. So this is for home dialysis. The team decided to create a step-by-step -step guide focused on how to independently use the machine and equipment safely. 
The development of this guide included extensive consumer input and continues to be amended based on feedback from new consumers. The guide is used for training every person, including staff, um, and the learning is completed um, before the uh, machines have become operational for those. Consumers have reported the guide has made them feel confident in setting up and using the machine independently. And that's remarkably different from what the manufacturer of the, of the machine have produced for use like this. And the team plan to submit an abstract submission to the Renal Society of Australasia conference. The next um, finalist is development of exercise physiology role on outpatient mental health inpatient units. The exercise physiology role was introduced due to increasing evidence of the effectiveness of exercise as therapy to alleviate symptoms of mental illness. There's always been this extraordinary disconnect between physical and mental illness. The services provide individual and group sessions in the gym and aims to address the physical health of consumers admitted to our mental health inpatient units. Consumers have provided positive feedback regarding the program with a number of consumers wanting to continue attending the gym following discharge. And the program has continued to increase sessions for all units due to increased demand. The next finalist is key contact worker. The COVID-19 pandemic resulted in significant hospital visitor restrictions. And the Key Contact Worker Initiative was set up to support patients from residential aged care facilities and disability services to stay connected with their families and carers. The Key Contact Worker provided individual support to assist patients to use different technology, such as iPads and phones, to connect with their carers and families. Patients enjoyed the interaction with the Key Contact Worker as much as the connection with families and carers. It's all very well to have the technology, but you have to be able to use it well. The next finalist is the Pregnancy Journey Map. The Pregnancy Journey Map was developed by the Loddon Valley Health Network as part of the Safer Baby Bundle. And the roadmap showed consumers what to expect next and gave them confidence their care would be the same throughout the region. The map has increased the knowledge of consumers, contributing to a 25% reduction in the average stillbirth rate and prevented 20 stillbirths. The um, group of us that had the decision had great difficulty, as always, but we um, instructed <laughs> to come up with a number. In third place, the Clarier flip chart and machine. And well done, real team. Thank you very much. Congratulations. In second place, development of exercise physiology role in mental health inpatient units. And the winner is Pregnancy Journey Map. Thank you. Congratulations to the winner and to all of you finalists. And um, just thank you to everybody for their amazing work this year. And now, Bob. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marilyn, and uh, just makes you appreciate how fantastic the staff and the team are uh, at Bendigo House. We are we are so proud of uh, all of the work uh, that our staff do. And uh, on behalf of the board, can I just say to Peter, 
uh, Faulkner, to all of the team. We wish you all a very, very happy Christmas uh, and New Year. And we all look forward uh, to working together next year. And can I just uh, finish uh, by thanking the board for your support and your help through the year. You're, you're a fantastic group, just as, just as uh, this organisation is a fantastic organisation. Thank you very much for your attendance today.